Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released watchOS 26.1 to the public. watchOS 26.1 released around the world at the same time for everyone on all watchOS 26 supported devices. This particular update came in at 4.6 gigabytes. That's on my Apple watch ultra three. So a very large install. And if you were wanting to install it and you weren't sure where to do that, you can find that under your watch settings, go down to general and then software update. Now, one thing to mention is if you're on the watchOS 26.1 RC, you'll also have an update, but you'll need to turn off your beta updates first in order to see it. So if you're not seeing it and you were using the betas or release candidate, make sure you turn that off and then check again. Once you check, you should have it. And in order to install it, it will install on its own. However, because of its size, it can be fairly slow. In order to speed that up, I just wanted to share a little tip. You can go into your settings, go down to Bluetooth, scroll all the way to the bottom and then just turn off Bluetooth while it's trying to install the update. This forces it to go to Wi-Fi and typically downloads a lot faster. So if you're having that issue, make sure you do that and it will install typically much faster than before. Now, as far as the overall update, let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and then talk about what's new. So we'll go back into our settings, then we'll go down to general and then about. And as you can see, the build number is 23S37. This lets you know you're on the public version as that's the public build. And as long as you have that version, you're good to go. Now, as far as new features, well, there's not a ton in this update as far as features go, but there is one when it comes to translate. So if we go into the translate app, you'll see that we have additional options for languages. So just like they added this on the iOS 26.1 update, you'll see that we have Arabic, Chinese, Mandarin, simplified Chinese, Mandarin, traditional Dutch, English, French, German, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, Thai, Turkish, Ukrainian, and Vietnamese. Vietnamese. So all of those are now available on the translate app directly on the Apple watch. So that's a nice update if you've been wanting those updates and that goes along with the Apple intelligence update we have as well. Now, if you're utilizing the smart stack here and you have the date in the upper left hand corner, you can now tap on it and it will open up into your calendar. So it's a small shortcut that they've added with 26.1. Another update they've added has to do with workouts. You can now customize workouts directly on your iPhone by going into the fitness app, go under the workout tab at the bottom, and now you can customize workouts. So you can select whatever you want for your workout, everything from archery, and you can keep scrolling all the way down to yoga, select whatever you'd like. And then it customizes some of the information below it. So you can set things such as distance, duration, start, active calories, and effort. So it will change based on the activity or the workout you're doing. For example, a pool swim will then switch to pool length. So it's a nice little update here if you want to customize that. Now, this is mostly a bug fix and security update. However, they did seem to fix the always on display bug that some people were having with Apple Watch Ultra One. There are still some issues here, though. The first thing is the control center. So if I bring that up, you'll see it's quite laggy as I sort of have it come into the display. The animation is not that smooth. It looks like it's either very choppy or just has low frame rates. Also, it seems they didn't fix the issue with swiping down to mark your messages as read. So that doesn't seem to be fixed and email notifications are not coming in for some people as well. It does seem to fix most notifications, however. So if you are getting notifications on your phone, they should be carried across to the watch and they seem to be working properly now. However, it doesn't look like they've fixed much else. But if we go ahead and take a look at the release notes, these are Apple's public facing release notes. We'll take a look here. You'll see if we scroll down, they did resolve some issues with HealthKit. They resolved some issues with Swift UI, and that's really all they mention here. So there's not a whole lot going on as far as that goes. So not a whole lot to report as far as bug fixes in watchOS 26.1. There's also quite a few security updates on Apple's security release website. If we scroll down, you'll see all of the latest updates with iOS 26.1 and more. But if we go to watch OS 26.1, you'll see that there's quite a few listed here. Everything from Apple's neural engine to find my to font parser, installer, kernel, as well as mail drafts, phone, and much more. And the overall issue here for phone, for example, is the impact as an attacker with physical access to locked Apple watch may be able to view live voicemail to fix this. The description is an authentication issue was addressed with improved state management. So there's definitely a lot of different security updates in here along with iOS 26.1 as well.
So if you're wondering if you should install watchOS 26.1, well, I definitely would because of the security updates, and it does seem to have a few bug fixes, mostly for notifications for most people. And we'll talk about battery life in just a moment. But overall, all of those security updates and some of the fixes seem to be good, but it does need a little bit more refinement. If we talk about performance for a moment, you'll see that it's generally pretty fast. If we go into maybe our clock or alarms here, we can go into different settings that I don't typically go into on my watch. Maybe we'll go into music, give it a second to load. You'll see that everything is generally pretty fast. However, we still have that lag issue I mentioned with the control center. As far as battery life, well, this was taken off the charger about well, more than 12 hours ago at this point, about 14 hours ago, and we're down to 44%. It was using optimized battery charging and only charged to 80%, so it's actually using very little battery. It's doing quite well. It will usually get me a couple days here, but I put it on the charger every night, typically. If we go into our settings, this time we'll go down to battery here. So if we go down to battery, Given that this is a new watch, I would expect it to be at 100% battery health. Typically watches stay on high battery health for a while, but you'll see maximum capacity is 100%. If we take a look at battery usage, we'll go back. We'll see the usage here. You can see where it was charged. So it was charged, scroll down here. It looks like it went into low power mode, maybe when my iPhone did when it was charging. But overall, it's been lasting me through the day. I even used it for a workout for about a half hour to 45 minutes and then used it as a watch and of course using its normal functions. So overall, it's lasting quite well. Of course, it may take a few days for it to get a little bit better. That overall install was fairly large, so it may take a few days for that to stabilize. As far as the watch face I'm using, you'll see this is the modular watch face. And if we go to edit, we can take a look at the complications that we have here. So for example, I just have color set to multicolor. And then we have complications such as the date. Then we have fitness or activity, compass, messages, and then the weather. In the middle, though, is an app called Lumi. It's just for countdown to golden hour or one of the best times to take photo and video. You can change it to countdown to sunrise. You have a day overview and others. This is actually a paid app that I've had for years and I really just like the look of it. So I've been using it for quite some time. So if you wanted to know what watch face I'm using, that's what I'm using. Now watchOS 26.1 doesn't seem to offer a whole lot here, but we do have that nice update for translation with additional languages. We have some bug fixes, still some remaining, and then of course, hopefully battery life gets much, much better. Now watchOS 26.2 beta one is out already. So if you haven't heard about that, the major feature update in that has to do with health. So within health under sleep, they've now updated the sleep score. So if you utilize sleep and you measure this sleep score has been updated with different metrics and some changes there. So that's the first update we know about, but so far it looks like they're not doing a whole lot with watch. Maybe we'll get a lot more with watchOS 26.2, 26.3, or maybe we have to wait until watchOS 27. But either way, it's not a huge update, but it is a functional update and hopefully it improves over time. Let me know what you're using as far as your watch face and how it's going for you. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link the wallpaper I was using on my Apple watch and my iPhone in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.